July was a positive month for growth assets with the majority of major indices ending in positive territory. One of the main reasons was data from the US, which is the world's largest economy. And this data supports what is being called a Goldilocks soft landing scenario. Here, the economy slows down, but does not actually go into reverse. And the jobs market does not suffer, but inflation is tamed. Importantly, the most recent inflation reading in the US in June was just 3%. And that's just above the Fed's target of 2%. So one of the main reasons the US economy has performed better than expected, despite interest rates still yet to peak, is that many US consumers are still protected via low long-term mortgage rates, which became available after the COVID pandemic. And so they're not yet really feeling the pain of the current rate environment. And it's also worth remembering that growth asset returns so far this year in the US have been driven by a handful of technology stocks. So the markets remain sensitive to any short-term news flow from this basket of companies. In the UK, growth assets also had a positive month, following a surprise decline in inflation from 8.7% to 7.9% in June. Sectors such as house builders stand to gain the most from lower interest rates. And if the peak for rates is sooner than expected, this may be a turning point for the valuation in UK shares. However, it is worth noting that core inflation continues to remain sticky, so more confirmatory data is needed to support the view that UK inflation is actually under control. On the other side of the inflation story is Japan. Now, Japan persists as the world's only central bank that has negative interest rates. However, the Bank of Japan now needs to rethink its ultra-loose monetary policy, as inflation is finally increasing after many years and is now higher than in the US at 3.3%. In terms of factor performance in July, it was small cap and value that led returns at the expense of growth and the momentum factors. Moving to defensive assets, the disconnect between what bond and equity markets think about recession probability has continued. The US 10-year Treasury yield continues to hover around the 4% mark and an inverted yield curve remains. So this is where returns on a two-year bond are higher than a 10-year bond. And this is still considered to be a barometer for impending recession. So in summary, the key challenge for markets as we go through the third quarter is to navigate through the data to finally see a peak in the interest rate cycle. Until this is clearer, market volatility will remain. Therefore, as ever, retaining an appropriate level of diversification across asset classes, regions, and styles remains key to avoiding the potential pitfalls that could emerge at any time.